The Word was made flesh. Then we saw His glory. We saw His glory when the Word was made flesh. The Word was made flesh. Then we saw His glory. When we saw His glory. Then the Word was made flesh. Dear friends, welcome to this session. Just to recap before our prayer, in the previous session we looked at the packing. That moment when we pack and give up on everything. And then God intervened. Comes in right when we need them the most. Yes. And we sometimes are probably giving up on him as well, you know. Uh, I once made a statement, you know, that there are some people who are deeply hurt by life. And in return, they never really found their way back to God. And we were arguing in that statement that don't let the hurt of today destroy your connection with God. Let's pray. Let's connect. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our Father, in your mercy and love, we, we thank you. We thank you for this wonderful moment. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for those who are watching we thank you for the people we are ministering with and we are ministering to, that you may open our minds, our hearts, to be touched by the Holy Spirit. Open us to become faithful to you, to become faithful to the Word, that whatever we share today may touch us, may lead us as missionary disciples. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we see that... When Jesus realizes that the crowd is pressing on him, then he decides to choose to sit on Peter's boat. Mm. And then he asks him to move the boat just a little bit away from the shore. Mm. Then he starts to teach. But I want us to focus on why Jesus chooses Peter's boat. That's an interesting question. Uh, you realize that the crowd is, is approaching, well, the crowd, the, the, the text says, it's pressing on him. And so he's like going to push back. But if he pushes back, he, he has no ground to stand on. And as he has no ground to stand on, the only thing that he can probably use is the boats. Because he can't stand on the water. And so he asks to use Peter's boats. There are two boats. He uses one of them, I'm presuming. And he sits on it. And you see the crowd is standing on a firm ground. And Jesus is on the boat, but in the lake, in the sea, which is not firm, you know. And don't you sometimes get there? Where somebody says, but you're pushing me, you're pushing me. And easily we can be pushed into depression. Easily we can be pushed into anxiety. We can be pushed into guilt. Or we can be pushed into darkness. And some never really come out. And some remain there. But look at Jesus. Even though he's pushed into the uncertain surface, he still teaches. He's the one who leads. And so it's not how much you hit me. It's how much I can stand after being hit by the wave. Which brings us to emotional stability. How stable are we emotionally? through things that are happening around us and in our lives, can we then stand for who we are? You know, Small, if we talk about emotional stability, we haven't spoken much as a church about emotional health. You know, the things that we, we allow ourselves to feel, the words that we allow others to speak to us. You know, uh, we look at the curriculum of our kids. We're like, my child, they're going to go to this school. What are you going to teach my children? And so we, we know the intellectual capacity, but we also know the academic roles. Uh, what are you going to teach this and this and this? What about the mental health? Uh, love. Compassion, affection, forgiveness, anger. We, we, do we ever talk about those things? Do we ever 
take those things seriously. And so what you're talking about, it's something that I think we owe it to ourselves. You know, I was talking to a friend of mine and he says, refuse to be a victim. I can be hurt, but I refuse to be a victim. And it's very unfortunate, as you're saying, that our, our curriculum doesn't teach us life lessons. It only teaches us uh, theoretical concepts. So that's the unfortunate part because it means that with emotional stability and emotional intelligence, you have to pick it up from your own experiences and learn. And uh, which brings me to a book I'm reading. It asks three questions. And the important question that is that it asks is that who am I mm. and knowing who you are has nothing to do with your accolades it has nothing to do with what you've achieved or what you have it's about you as an individual as an emotional being mm. who are you you know the question you, you're raising it's it's an important one because if we were to pause for a moment wherever we are and say who am I and, and you go to the scriptures in, in the gospel of Mark chapter 7, Jesus asked that question. He goes to Caesarea Philippi and he says, who do people say the son of man is? And so, who am I? It's like, why am I always angry? Why am I always depressed? Why am I always a clown? Why am I always choosing to be alone? Why does this person always irritate me? And sometimes we run away from these important questions to say, but okay, you're full and you're full and you're full but go on. I mean, in a dating game, do you ever really like, who really are you? But the, the other question is, before I go to Ubanwe, I'm going to give you the whole of me. But what is this whole of me? I mean, there is whole with W-H-O-L-E. That's whole totality. But there's also whole with H-O-L-E. I'm in Bobo, you know, I'm empty. Do I know who I am? And another element that I want us to look at is the boat. The boat was empty. Peter and his friends were already outside the boat and packing. And Jesus comes into this empty boat. Yeah. Which is a reflection again of our lives. There are times, last is our comments, I said, Sepele on, I've tried. And you feel this emotional emptiness and then God comes in and settles in that emptiness. Nothing can happen at this point in time. That moment of being alone. That those, those nights, those drives alone, uh, where you feel that nobody gets you. You know, I, 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 I've been reflecting on on the man in the gospel of John chapter 5, the man uh, at the pool of Bethsaida, you know, who's been lying there for 38 years. It's easy to judge that man. It's easy to say he was lazy. I mean, he makes lame excuses that everybody jumps in front of me. Nobody's there to help me. He feels sorry for himself. But he probably lives a lonely life. To be, to be stuck. You know, there, there, there are some of us who... Who've lived life and a little bit older, and there are things we've gone through that we've never spoken about. So we're stuck in our own pains, we're stuck in our own sufferings, and we 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 feel empty. And and you're right when you say God comes to them at the moment when they feel they are empty. But do they recognize that it is God? They don't. And sometimes I don't recognize him when I need him the most. I can be staring at love. I can be in a relationship 
with someone who will move mountains for me. But unless I know how to be loved, I will never appreciate it. I will realize when that person is gone that that person truly loved me. And so I can be empty and Jesus comes and I don't recognize him. That's the sad part. And any disifundayo with Peter is the grace to accept. Goba, there's a crowd of people who know that he's a fisherman. And Bambon was okay how Namsan he's packing up. He hasn't caught anything, but he has accepted. He's packing up because he has accepted it's our Wednesday gang and Yeah. And yeah. do we accept? Utoluguti, we have the skill, but Namsan Angwazanga, Ugwenzi Jamang Joy Ugwenzi, did I accept? Yeah. Or was I blaming other people? Ah, it's because when you took the boat uh, too much uh, into the shore or whatever. Jali, we are ready to say it's the other people. When do we accept that, yes, it's my skill, but I failed today? Yeah, as a small, you, 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 you're talking about something as we're coming towards the end. The ability to accept. To accept the reality, you know. Go back to that beautiful prayer, serenity prayer. To change the things that I can. To accept the things that I cannot change. You know, when I talk to somebody at home, there are certain things that are beyond our control. There are certain things that we cannot change. We can pray, we can cry, we just are not able to change certain things. And the sooner I accept the reality, the closer I move towards my healing. And to accept to Gucci, Lesisimo Sinji. You know, I have to accept that my mother died. I have to accept that my father died. I have to accept that my marriage was having difficulties and we divorced. There are certain things I just need to accept. I need to accept my failures. I need to accept I failed. But rightfully, as you said, accepting does not mean I cannot try something else again. It doesn't mean that. And in closing, we realize that Jesus uses the bolt for a different purpose. So allowing Jesus to transform what you have. For them, the boats, they use it just to go and catch fish, but Jesus uses it as a podium, and he teaches. And in closing, I want us to remember that God's selection is not by mistake. Yeah. It's by purpose. Yeah. And God selected Peter's boat for a reason, and God is selecting you and I powerful. for a powerful purpose. Yeah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. God, our Father, in your mercy and love, we thank you. Continue to guide us, to lead us, to be with our brothers and sisters, wherever they are. Bless us, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. The Word was made flesh. Then we saw His glory. We saw His glory when the Word was made flesh.